Look, it's been a difficult journey for the ANC. Power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And I think the ANC has to contend with that over the last 30 years. It's not only about power, but also money. You know, uh, one of the things that the ANC and the uh, government, our South African government, never really took into consideration when it came with policies and the Constitution and the Bill of Rights is the power of money and how it can corrupt people. And so over the last 30 years, you know, for example, there's been many splits from the ANC, starting with uh, Banto Lumisa in the UDM, and then we had uh, COPE, and then we had uh, EFF, and now the latest iteration is we have MK Party. So I think it's an evolving maturity, mm -hmm. both in our democracy, but also the ANC. Um, and this constant fighting or wrestling with forces that are in the ANC that don't always subscribe to the culture of the ANC, that are not really ANC uh, cadres, mm -hmm. um, but in the party for self-engrandizement and, and self-enrichment and so forth. And we've seen a bit of progress since Ramaphosa came in. Um, you know, the step-aside rules have been strengthened, Integrity Commission is taken seriously, um, and a few, a few people have been expelled, including the highest ranking official of the ANC uh, in the form of the Secretary General, Ace Mahashule. So these are all telltale signs, slow but sure, mm -hmm. that things are changing. And if they can manage to keep their heads above water, maybe they will be able to win back the, the ANC of the yesteryear. So how do you think the ANC is going to perform in the upcoming May elections? Well, I mean, as you know, there's a lot of polling that's happening. Uh, some of them quite ridiculous as far as I'm concerned. Uh, saying that the ANC will drop below 33% and others are saying 44% and so forth. I'm saying ridiculous because firstly, polling is not an exact science. You know, it's just a, a, a small sample of people and, and how they feel on the day. 